Um, I realize actually, damn, we have to bit of a yell because no one will probably see it, so we'll probably not. Um, we can get everybody to stand up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'll show sure. um, So uh, I'm just going to talk a little bit about my final year project. I work with Matt, I'm Michael, sorry. I work with Matt at Brewbot and I'm embedded engineer there, but I'm also a final year student, which I try to balance. Um, and this is my final year project. Uh, it's built with the Photon, which Matt was talking about earlier. I'm going to talk a little bit more about like actually using it and how rapid it is um, in comparison to Brewbot and from what, what I learned to Brewbot and how I used it. Um, the point of the robot was to navigate hazardous situations um, with a cheap piece of hardware rather than having sort of big bomb robots which have a lot of complexity and so on. You have little tiny robots which kind of go in and if they get blown into pieces it doesn't really matter. Next one tries. Um, they just keep going until you eventually reach your end goal. Um, so this is this is a, the first prototype. Um, has a photon which powers it, and then um, it's a lot of other gibberish and uh, an, uh, um, an ultrasonic sensor for distance measurement, a gyroscope to detect what falls over, and things like that. Um, initial hardware uh, didn't take actually that all that long to develop. It only took maybe a week or two to put the whole thing together with how easy the photon is and. It actually comes down to um, part, some of the particle do, which is quite similar to Arduino in terms of they build shields. Um, so this has a shield shield on it, um, which is a shield for shields. So it allows you to... <laughs> Shieldception? <laughs> yeah, it allows you to interface um, existing shields, like Arduino shields, which I have up here, I have a motor shield. Um, it allows you to interface them with the photon, because the photon is 3B, uh, 3B3, it's 3.3 volts rather than 5 volts. Um, so a lot of stuff doesn't really work with it, um, or a lot of like, existing stuff doesn't normally work, but They've developed a lot of different pieces to make your rapid prototyping even faster because you can just chuck that hardware together. You don't have to do any soldering. This is completely solderless. I didn't solder anything to make this. It's completely just plugged together with a breadboard and then lots of wires. Um, and that's how it came to be. So the, the hardware is actually quite simple because, again, they have the Arduino like structure of having shields and all things like that. Um, so the test ball itself is designed to not have any logic on board. Um, if you take it, an example like a bomb robot, it has a massive amount of technology on board to actually do processing. It has a lot of sensors for um, hazard perception in the environment and things like that. And um, it just received command, just receives uh, commands over there from a bomb control unit, so it can move about. Um, this instead just has it, it has no logic on board, and it um, only receives commands of go forward, go backwards, go left, go right. That's all it actually does, um, and it sends out events of um, I've come to a wall and I don't know what to do. And it sounds like like I've fallen over. If the gyroscope detects that it falls over, or if it's been blown to bits and it doesn't really know what it's doing anymore, then um, <laughs> then that's that's something else it can send out. Um, <laughs> so, well, assuming there's enough of it left. Um, but <laughs> the uh, the the point of it is that all of the processing is done elsewhere by an API, which is written in Node. And um, I've used all of the particle, uh, what, which used to be called Spark um, APIs on their libraries to actually build that side of things. So um, originally, originally I designed this with Arduino. I had Arduino uh, Un in it, which is kind of a Linux, has a Linux-based bit inside it, and then it's got a microprocessor as well. Because if you, I, I tried with the Raspberry Pi for a little while, it took about a week for it to fail because. Um, <laughs> Using a sense, using complex sensors, especially like the ultrasonic, the original ultrasonic I had used um, feedback over current uh, or current, and the uh, the, you know, the Raspberry Pi was just not fast enough to process what was coming in. I gave up with it; it didn't work. Um, moved to Arduino, which was fine for the actually embedded stuff, but then it got really complicated when I started to try and connect it to the network, and it took me wait three or four weeks of playing with it. Um, I was doing this over summer and sort of looking at. Uh, this was a sort of an older project, it wasn't specifically for this, but I was trying, trying with an Arduino one stage to build something that um, would interface with the network, and it took about three or four weeks for me to realize that it's actually really complicated to write network stuff when all you've got is a TCP stack and a UPP stack, and you're just you're really about to send a packet out. But once that packet's, packet's out in the network, it's really complicated to get that somewhere that you can use it. Um, whereas the Photon, you plug it in and you say, make this information go somewhere, and then somewhere else you say, give me information that came from somewhere. And um, with the, with they, they have a node library, which you just pull down and say, I would like events that say, if the robot has failed, just give me events that say failed, give me events that say stopped, give me events that say complete. 
uh, from all of the robots in my um, my account, and then uh, I just collect them up, collect all those events up in my node script, and uh, I, I send. It, I have an API then which prints them out into a sort of front end, um, and it took maybe a day or two to actually get all those events coming out, and then the most important bit was it only took about a week to actually have them coming in and being used somewhere on the node side of things, on the actual front end. Um, and that was really, that's really the par of the photo in my mind. There's, there's loads and loads and loads of different devices, IOD devices, that can connect to a network and can send something out. And you can have your normal embedded application, you can detect stuff and you can do outputs into an embedded world. But actually um, using that data and putting data into the device is really complicated because all you've got is really basic TCP and UDP stuff. Um, whereas when you have what Photon provide in terms of their whole cloud, and you can just curl something and tell it, here's some data, and then on the, the actual embedded side of things, it's a couple of lines of code to pick that up, and then it can, again, send a couple of lines of code to send something out, and you just curl somewhere and you get that data. It's so simple. Um, and that's, that's really, it's been three or four months to actually build this, and with its functionality, it drives around. I can, uh, I maybe can demo it, um, but it can, <laughs> I can, I can make it move around. And it, you just, it's got, I've got buttons and a web controls. I can, I can show the web controls. Um, Are you also can bring over a big table. A big table. That's. I, I don't want to use too much time, obviously. But, um, you don't want to say it, move. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Come on, you can't have all this building. Yeah, let's have a post. Already have. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Nothing could possibly go wrong. Yeah, it's completely well. Uh, so. <laughs> there we go. So this is this is a product of four or five months um, of uni as well. So obviously I've got other stuff to do. So but this is this is my funny product and it's worth that. I've got these web controls and um, I've got a whole bunch of data, calibration information, things like that. I can calibrate friction and things like that so it knows what kind of circuits it's on and then I can do, uh, if I tell it to move 40 centimeters, I can do that. Um, the API will work out what that means in terms of how long it needs to move for, send a forward command and send a stop command, stuff like that. Um, I have a little joystick which is just for simplicity's sake, and then that kind of thing. I can move it around, move it backwards. Have you tested the fall tolerance yet? Uh, <laughs> yes, that's not good. <laughs> so, but I can uh, bring it, and there we go. So that's it. I'm still holding stop, but it's it's you know, I killed all the commands because I said that it's hit a wall and it doesn't know what to do, and Aww. it's just about to well, it's about to hit a wall, and um, in this case, it's decided to stop. So it's that's that's really where it's come from, and that to, in my opinion, to get that done in three or four months with a. Um, with like hardware and the actual API, so there's a full API, the front end and then the embedded side of it as well. Like all of that in three or four months of not full time development is a pretty like you know that's pretty impressive for how how much of uh, you get with the photon. Considering it's a nineteen dollar chip and you have you know the 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 node script, it's the, the actual picking up of events and they've got they've got an SDK for iOS and for Android as well, so you can do all of this in an app on your mobile or whatever as well. You can detect all these events, um, and to be able to do that just by saying a couple of lines of code that says whatever my robot's doing, give me it. It's not. It's pretty pretty awesome in terms of that. So yeah, that's that's me. It's test one. Nice one. Nice one.